So welcome to workshop number seven. Somehow we've managed to survive for seven weeks. I think we're doing okay. Woo! So it's presented by me. I know it says thanks to Ananda for the Q&A, but I didn't actually ask him this week. So <laughs> that was his big surprise. But I'll thank him anyway. And using ha sound bites composed by Hannah Silver. And fellow Melbourneian. A, indeed, a fellow Melbourneian. So our program today, this, the welcome. And then we've got, surprise, Max, who's going to be talking about 360 inside. And he's going to spin around like a demented ballerina to show you some of that. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll get there. Um, I was originally planning on talking about photographic genres in this one. And then I thought that's actually not very local guides. So I'm skipping it for this week. But what I want to do is um, pop into the chat whether you'd like a talk about photographic genres, because it definitely will take us away from local guides. And if you do, I'll pop that in next week, because we've already done some of the topics from next week in previous weeks. Anyway, so I'll be showing you places and what to shoot at a place, or my suggestions for that, and my suggestion for how many shots. These aren't rules, they're just suggestions. And how to do product photography as well, a little bit of that. Then I'll be covering 360 street view for how to make the blue lines outside. I'm going to cheat a little bit for that one because, as you can imagine, it's kind of dark. That wouldn't really work inside, so I'm going to be playing you a video I made earlier. Surprise. <laughs> and the 360 phone demonstration that was at the end is actually in Max's segment. It's a pretty Indeed. Surprise. So let's have a look at your photos from last week. Oh, wow. I've picked a few favourite ones this week. So my first favourite was this one from Shreya. Do you want to tell us about that if you're here? Let me look at the I, 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 I'm not Shreya, but I would like to say that looks delicious and I want to eat that chocolate yumminess. Yeah, she's not actually here, unfortunately. I've just looked through the people. But um, she did tell me this is a chocolate that she made at home because, of course, during lockdown, oh, wow. not everybody can get out. But that's... <laughs> pretty damn impressive it's wow. really nice adds a nice human element this one's by feliciana and i think she's not here either this week oh well i'll chat about hers as well so this one was a um, traditional american breakfast that she found while she was at connect live last year and to me, that's only about half the food I'd expect on a traditional American in breakfast, but <laughs> still kind of impressive. But it's a, a nice shot. Um, it shows the main thing that she was impressed with, which was the crepe, and gives you an idea of what the other foods are and what the place is like from a cleanliness perspective, which is really cool. And this one, and guess what? Someone else who's not here this week, Adrian. <laughs> Um, this, this one is quite a cool food photo. Uh, so it really gives you the idea of that quite nice, tasty fish. It's really well presented. It's a nice top-down shot. I really like a top-down shot for a dish like this because it gives you a, a good idea of the whole dish and how it's going to, I think actually how it's going to taste. I really do think that just from this photo because you can see what all of the ingredients are and you can see how nice it looks. Nice chart effect. Nice. Bar. I love. I have to say, I love the the chart, the lemon on the side or the lime on the side. How that's also got grill marks on it. That makes it like super. That, that level of detail is really interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. For the uh, people who have just joined, we are recording this, and it will go up onto YouTube. I'll just remind you of that occasionally as people join in. This is something I wanted to show you. Um, this is a new software I got for getting rid of noise in photographs. I'm not in the business of advertising commercial stuff, but I just wanted to show you what kind of technology is available now. So this is using, they say it's using artificial intelligence, but really it's using machine learning. And do you remember that image from, I think, week five, where I showed you this really noisy image and we talked about high ISO and how that generates a lot of noise in your photographs. And yeah. that sometimes to get the moment, you've just got to put up with that. Well, I processed that same image through this software. Um, it's 
designed for noise cancellation and I have to say it did a pretty amazing job. I was impressed enough I bought it. How much was it? Oh, it's about 50 bucks. Oh, it's not, not, not expensive compared to, you no, know, compared really. to other stuff like uh, Adobe sort of stuff. Now, this is pretty cheap if you think every month and don't think about the whole year. Wait, is it? <laughs> is, sorry, is it? Did you say it's fifty dollars forever or fifty dollars? That's fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for this version. So, and that gets you upgrades for one year. I'll, oh, I'll okay. pop in the chat that's for anybody that's interested in it on what it actually is. But anyway, I thought, I thought that was quite amazing um, change in the technology, and I was pretty impressed with what it did. And I've fed quite a few of my other high noise photos through it, and it's kind of cool. It does lose a little bit of the sharpness of the image, but with that much noise, it's kind of hard to tell, to be honest. I think you'd only notice if you were printing it. Guess what? It's time for Max. So I'll stop presenting. I got lazy and used the same photo, Max, sorry. So I'll stop presenting. That's now. a great That's a great photo. I like that one. <laughs> and Max will be able to take over for a little while. And I shall mute myself. Okay, g'day everyone. I'm Max. I love doing 360 photography, uh, especially and uploading it to Google Maps. My photos of 360, my 360 photos have been seen over 200 million times, uh, and, and I, uh, you, nobody knows Google's algorithm. But I think that's because I take nice photos. I use this camera, um, and and this I used to use this one. I use Theta Theta V cameras, and Paul actually owns one, um, but they're great and they are preferred by Google. Um, there's a range of supported cameras by Google. Most of them are supported, but this one, the way it works is it has a lens on both sides and it takes one photo, uh, two, sorry, these two photos at the same time and then it stitches it together um, in, uh, in the camera and then you can upload it to Google. Um, but the great thing with 360 photos is that now anyone with a phone uh, can do it yourself. So. Uh, and ever, anyone with an Android or iPhone can do it yourself. So I'm going to encourage everyone to, to get the app open. It's called, the app that allows you to do it. It's called Street View. Um, so this is the app here. Um, and uh, so if everyone can open that app up and then put like a thumbs up in the chat when you've got that app, app open. Um, uh, so yeah, and and I'll, and I'll walk, we'll, and then once you have the thumbs up open, we'll, I'll walk everyone through the um, the, the process. Um, and then uh, actually, Paul, can you put a link to the album, a link to the album, the, the, the photos album in the chat? Because afterwards, we're going to all put our photo, 360 photos into uh, into uh, in, into the chat together. So the way it works is you. I really, there's a little button down the bottom where you press the little take a photo thing. And so you do that and then, oh, sorry, wait. There. Nope. Back. There. Yeah. So you go to click the profile first on the app and then you press the little camera button down the bottom. And then you go take a photo sphere. Click take photo sphere, and then every, you'll need to stand up for this part, or you'll need um, and you'll need to actually um, unplug your headphones if you had headphones in. So you click take photo sphere, and now I'm going to take a photo sphere in my apartment. So um, you open your camera up. You, you sometimes need to give permissions, so you know I need to give permissions, and then you see a little orange dot, and so you get hover the orange dot over the part of the camera and then you'll need to take a step around and follow all the orange dots around the room and take uh and take a photo so each every time you're ta taking the orange dot you're taking a photo in android it's a blue dot <gasps> okay blue dot orange dot thank you paul um so i'm getting all of these little dots now i just look like a normal guy don't i paul this looks totally normal you don't look like some strange ballerina at all. So you, you can imagine doing this in the, the middle of a shopping center somewhere or a, in a, a nice restaurant or something like that, where you're just casually taking a 360 <laughs> with the phone. Yeah. And I think you can see why most people prefer to use a 360 camera. The phone works. 
fairly nicely. It usually stitches the image fairly well, but as you can see, it takes a while and people are certainly going to notice you're doing it. <laughs> I think that, I think it's good. It's great the use of existing technology. I mean, you've already got the phone, you don't have, you know, it's effectively free because everyone has a, most people already have a phone. They do indeed. And it, it's a great gateway to getting into the Street View photography. I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but there's actually a cousin program, if you like, to the Local Guides program. In Local Guides, you're probably all aware that we um, can't get paid and we can't make any money. We can't get any rewards from places that we review or take photos for or put onto maps. The Street View Trusted Photographer program, assuming it's still called that this week, because I know they're going through a revamp and Google love renaming stuff when they do that. <laughs> It, you actually can make money. So you still can't make money for reviews or adding your day-to-day -day photos, and but you can actually be employed to create 360 imagery and create what's called virtual tours, which I imagine Max will probably get into later on. And you can also make money for managing people's Google My Business entries. So while you can't get paid for the local guides activity, you're putting them on the map, if you do it through GMB, Google My Business, um, you can. Uh, yes, that's very true. And so, um, I, I, so the silliness is over. I'm not going to be. I've done it. I've gone around in circles like a maniac. <laughs> so the first time I did this, I, I, I was using the Google app, and I was in a hotel in the Philippines with my wife, and it said, "Would you like to create a photosphere?" And I was like, "You know, why not?" So I clicked yes, and then it prompted me to download the app, and I downloaded the app, and. Ever since that's what really got me excited to do 360 photography was actually doing a photosphere was my first my first go at it. Um, so now the little Google man is putting it all together um, on the little Google man assembles it all, um, and it's going pretty quickly. It usually takes about a minute or a minute or less, but it's pretty amazing for a mobile phone, you know, tech. To do that in all that uh, time. Um, do you know? I don't actually. If anybody here does have a three Android version, um, I think I, I'm not sure. I, oh, I, uh, actually, I know. It's I been a while since because Android's got AR right. core. It's still it doing the 360 what on. It does the 360 on chip in the phone while you're actually taking the picture. Oh, oh that's pretty cool. Okay. So then you then let the load it up. Let's have a look. This I know it's not pretty, but this is this is the photosphere in of my apartment. And there's the, the, the playpen for my my baby Shifra. But you can see for a for a for a, a I, just for a phone, it's actually really I'm very impressed with the the quality. Now this is I'm very I, and I'm, I'm I've done this many times. So if your first one's not as good as this, don't worry about it because it, it takes time getting used to it you um but yeah that's how you do it um if anybody else has done that please put it into the the, the link the album album of the week because i'd love to check out your ones and i will put this in that as well um and that is how you do a 360 photo photo from your iphone or android phone <laughs> um Maybe that could be the task of the week because I noticed it's kind of hard to do it while if, if I'm not noticing people not really doing it while the presentation is going because it's very hard. If you want to do it later when we're not in the, the seminar, you, you can you can also do it later and then upload it to the folder. <laughs> um, so uh, that's... Do you want to talk, do you want to talk yeah. about the business side of uh, 360 inside at all? Somebody yeah. So I might be interested in, in a way to make a, a career out of it. So I've had some restaurants um, reach out to me on Instagram or some uh, some shopping centres, and they've asked me to come into their space and take some 360 photos for for Google My Business for their tenants. And so I've done that. I brought my, my my special camera and I, and I'm a tripod and I've taken a series of cameras photos, and then I upload it to Google Maps and then they pay me three or four hundred dollars each time. Um, so that's a good uh, side hustle uh, to to get a bit of money. Um, yeah, it's a really cool way to, to do it. Um, and th th they know that my photo is going to be seen by lots of people because I have a, a good good local guide account, which seems to be seen by a lot of photo views. So it's, um, yeah, sometimes shopping centres have really n nasty 360 photos. Like it might be a photo of their loading bay 
where the, the Google Street View truck, the truck is just, or bus is, uh, or car is just driven by and just, it's taking a photo of their loading dock or their car park. It's not a great representation of the center. So to hire a trusted local guide, a trusted guide, it's trusted street, street view trusted. <laughs> street view trusted photographer. Street view trusted photographer. <laughs> It, for now, um, is a great way to get a great image of your center on Google Maps. Um, the other interesting thing is you can then also embed that on their website. So you can put that virtual tour, even though it's on Google Maps, you can embed that on your website. So can, people can check it out on the website as well. Yes, indeed. Um, it's quite a, an interesting thing to do. Now, if you do take up the street, Google Street View Trusted Photographer program. It's not easy, is it? <laughs> it's no, it's not easy. <laughs> it's probably why they'll rename it. Um, you need to be particularly careful about the conflict of interest between that and your local guides. Now, there's some stale advice out on the internet, and I'll call this out because it's definitely not true and it will actually get you in trouble. The, um, the stale advice says to create a second account for Street View Trusted Photographer. Definitely don't do that. You can use your local guide's account, it's fine. Uh, but just make sure that you keep the two activities very separate and Keep uh, the best way to do it is to keep a diary of your professional work and what you've done versus your local guide's work. So if you and you don't need to write down the local guide stuff because your timeline will cover that pretty well. But just write down the professional stuff and what capacity you did it. Uh, to get into the trusted program is fairly easy, although it takes a little while. Because uh, I think you, it, I think I think they've actually paused. I think they've paused people being allowed into the trusted view program for them for the moment. They're letting people into the program, but they're not adding them on to connect. So you don't get the badge, but they, you can still get into the program. So I clarified that yesterday, just to make sure. Uh, if you generate 50 photo spheres using the Street View app or in some other app, as Falguni mentioned, and then uploading them through the Street View app, that does work. Uh, you, that gets you into the point where you can turn on the trusted switch in that app. And that will, after they check out your, um, 360s that you've put up and if they decide that they're of a sufficient quality to be acceptable, they'll then send you a email with a link for how to apply. Um, you can, in the meantime, if you just Google Street View Trusted Photographer Earn, E-A-R-N, um, that'll take you to some instructions for how to do it. And I think getting that trusted badge really does help your your photo views go up. And I think it mean I think the algorithm um, uh, shows trusted photographers' photos more than non-trusted. And that's a gut feeling. I don't have any. I don't know what the algorithm shows, but that's what I feel like the algorithm shows. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether it does or not. Um, I do know that if you submit a 360 and it's the only one as a Street View trusted photographer, it does automatically become the headline 360 for the place. Yeah, if there, aren't, if there aren't any others, and if a local guide puts one up later, yours will stay there because the SDTP mm. one is is higher. And I, I've seen that through personal experience, so I know that happens. Yeah, and um, I, I, when you're talking about the difference between professional and personal one, uh, when I take 360 photo tours, uh, th a, a, a 360 degree tour of the premises, I don't upload it from my personal account. Uh, most of the time, I upload it from the Google My Business platform. Um, which is the, the way the businesses manage Google. Um, but it's not really, it's, I'm not going to go into it today, but um, I, that it's a separate platform. So that's only associated with the business and not with me. Yeah. And if you want to create the tours, so you, you may have visited a business that's got several 360 images and you can step from image to image to image and go on a tour around the business looking at different features. Um, if you want to make those tours, you can do it with the Street View app, but I'd recommend that you don't because it's a particularly painful process and it's quite difficult. There's a lot of uh, commercial options that you can either subscribe to or you can pay a once off to get into it. If you're doing it professionally, it's worth using one of those. If you're not going to take it up professionally, using the Street View app is the way to do it. Yeah, I mean, the Street View, it's, it's free, so it's a good way to do your first one or two. Um, yeah, but then you need. I think if you're at a professional level, you need to you need to pay for this. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I've got it. We've got some comments here. Creating three sixty photo spheres is very very interesting, but attracts too much attention in public places, and some people might find it offensive as well. Very <laughs> true. Yeah, very they true. can do. Yeah, they can do. Um, which is why Max showed you that camera <laughs> earlier. 
I think I've got mine over there somewhere. I'm not going to try and risk getting that bag over there. It's got too many lenses in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ananda says that link to the 360 isn't mine. I just had a look at the title. It's I was there, but it's not the. That's not the photo. Is that a link that you posted in the chat? Oh, okay, awesome. All right. Um, and Neil's oh, yeah. asked how to do the stitching. Um, as Falguni's replied, yeah, that does actually happen by itself in the Street View app. It just does it for you. Uh, and most and most 360 cameras um, in the in the in the entry range do it for you as well. You have to sort of get up to that very pro and prosumer level when sometimes you might want to do it yourself. I don't do it myself personally. It's just automatic is best usually. <laughs> yep. Um, well, not best. It's just easier. It's scalable. Yeah. You might remember back in one of the earlier sessions where we talked about various different lenses. Um, one of the ultra wide lenses, if you remember, was called a fisheye. If you take two shots with a fisheye, one facing that way and then one facing in the opposite direction, you can stitch those together quite easily and make a 360 out of them. You will need some software to do that, though. Justine says, I always get my 360 photos. Um, yep. Yeah, that happens when you do a photosphere. That's just part of it. It's very, very hard to... That's just, yeah, very hard to do it, that. Um, I would say the best way the best way to avoid that is if you sort of, uh, you sort of just, if you, if you move, if you move your foot, your feet in line with when you're spinning, um, you should avoid it as much as possible. If you move, if you step a little bit, if you do a little step, then you're going to get your feet in. But if you stay in exactly the same way and do a very tight circle, you'll have less feet in it. Yep. Less. I find the, the best way to do that very tight circle is to put a coin on the ground. So it gives you a point of reference for where the center of your circle is. That's good. Yeah. Now, the other thing I can um, say is if you've got one of those things mounted on your head, I have mine mounted on a, a helmet. looks a bit like a crash helmet when I use it. Um, you actually can't see yourself because you're underneath the thing. All you see is the top of the helmet. The other good one is to, if you get a tripod. Tripods really help. Um, and next level, if you get one of these little threaded, um, threaded, like uh, extensions, then you get even less of the tripod. So these are this was like three or four bucks, but it really improves your three hundred and sixty photo quality. Yep. And if you do buy yourself a, a monopod with feet, which are very very popular for using a three hundred and sixty camera, uh, make sure you get one that's nice and stable because the, the number of times I see people posting, I broke my camera, is they only survive one fall to the ground. Um, actually, I'm gonna, actually, uh, let me show you my monopod. This is the Bushman, um, uh, the Bushman monopod. It's one of the most popular ones for 360 photography. So it's got this part here and then it extends and then it, it connects to this base. And it has a weight, so to prevent what uh, Paul was talking about, broken cameras, the weight really is important, especially on windy days. Well, actually, don't use a 360 camera on windy days, but but if um, weigh it down. But if if you if you or if it's a slight breeze, the weight is essential to keep it down. And then you've got this here, and then this has got four levels, four levels of extension. Um, so, so it, it, it's a great height for a 360 street view, uh, street view photo. So then, and then it, Paul, can you see it? Is that good? Yeah, yeah, we can see the top of it and you. Awesome. So then that's it there. And then you can easily walk it around, move it, take a nice photo. And there you go. Boo, boo, boo. Ba 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 da 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 yeah. <laughs> it's also a microphone, so you can turn it on microphone. Um, wait a second. Um, use this for a screenshot, someone. Hang on. <laughs> Do it again. I'll pin you. Okay. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. So um, yeah, so this is the, now this one is, you if you want something a bit cheaper, the Benro, there's a Benro tripod, which I started with, which was about 50 bucks, um, which is good, but it's very, very, uh, it's very unstable and it's very, I was very scared of it knocking over. 
So when I got this, I, I wouldn't actually, re sorry, I, I, if you're getting a 360 camera that's over 300 bucks, definitely get a good monopod because it's just too risky otherwise. Yeah, yeah, um, I got mine from um, B&H, which is a, a Photoshop with one outlet in New York. And I amused, the en amused them no end because I ordered it from Australia before I left and put in the comments, I'll pick this up. And then got, are you sure? Do you know where we are? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, bro. It's okay. Um, yeah, I, I think I think 360 is a great, great part of the Go Local Guides program. And I think it's like, it, it's something a bit unique and most local guides don't do it. So that's why I like doing it because it's like that, that next level of, yep. um, of, of it. And it's also really great if anybody at your local guides meetups has a 360 camera, it's great to get a group shot. Um, that's always a fun group activity yep. at, a, at a lot of meetups. Especially if you do the one with all the hands reaching out to the camera, that, that always looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's have a look. Oh, Edward 3A says, so many retouch apps. Um, yes. So there is a, 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 no, sorry, somebody said retouch. Ania Jezkiz says retouch. So yes, retouch is a great app to remove the tripod from the bottom of a 360 photosphere or anything at the bottom feet in 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 your phone. The app is like less than five dollars, maybe it's three dollars, but it's very good. Um, and thank you for that recommendation because that's a really good one. Um, maybe put put a link to that app in the in the in the chat because that's a yeah, really cool it. app. And you put it's it in there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, and yeah, it's a really good app. Um, let's have a look at some of the other comments. Falguni says 100 for the performance. Thank you, Falguni. Uh, <laughs> and a link for the monopod, Manad. I think, Manad, I will put a link for the monopod. Um, uh, it's, it's the Bushman monopod. Uh, Jason also says Snapseed can be used for racing. Snapseed's also a good one. And I believe Snapseed's owned by Google, actually. I think oh, my wife says correct, but like, how do you, do you, you know that? Ah, yep. Uh, yeah. So my wife says it's, my wife also agrees with you saying it is correct. It is owned by Google. <laughs> um, Paul, is there anything else you want me to go, to go into? No, I think that'll cover it quite nicely. Awesome. Well, um, thanks everyone for listening to my 360s chat, uh, a talk about Photospheres and I look, look forward to seeing your Photospheres in the album. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> All right, then I'll open up the presentation again. So hopefully that's coming up. There it is. Cool. Can you see that now? All right. Thanks a lot, Max, for doing that. And notice I got your names right this time. So it's on Instagram, <laughs> it's Max Plus 360, and on Connect, Max Plus Food. Or at least it was when I checked before. Cool. And if you do another one, I promise I'll change the photo and get rid of the embarrassing toasty. It's actually a nice, I, I like that photo. It's a nice photo of me. <laughs> I, it's a screen grab out of a video, actually. <laughs> the other nice one is the photo of us two at the, um, at, uh, we have, there's a nice photo selfie of us at the, 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 the one of the restaurants that we took as well, that we visited as well. Yep. And the big group photos, lots of them. <laughs> But anyway, um, one of the reasons that you might want to get into 360, nice segue into places, <laughs> is putting up a 360 photo if there isn't another one is, I won't say it's guaranteed, but it seems to often appear as the feature image for the place, which means that if you're um, one of the people that likes increasing view counts, it's certainly a way to do it because you'll see your view count start to pop up if you've got the feature image. So. When you're photographing a place, what I'd like people to think about is, think about featuring that place. What are the most important aspects of it? Um, things about the vibe and the feeling. And in one of the talks that we'll have a little bit later on this evening, uh, any accessibility features, and that might include whether it's flat going through the entrance or the entrance looks wide enough for a wheelchair user, um, whether the toilets are accessible. Um, I personally don't usually take pictures of the toilets unless they do have a particular accessibility feature in them or they have something like a baby change table. 
Uh, if it's you're just going too, to, it's too risky, and you can get yourself. Yeah. If it's, you're going to do it, <laughs> people look weird at you. Make sure there's no one else in there. I think somebody just collapsed upstairs at my house. I guess the only ex <laughs> exception would be like if you're in like a homeware store and there's a whole bunch of toilets on the on display. That would be like fine, but weird, but still fine. Interesting side fact. I work for a water utility and we have a school display where they bring school groups through. It's not unusual for a five or a six year old to jump on one of the display toilets and use it in front of everybody else. <laughs> no. And for that reason, the display toilets are actually flushable. Um, if you go to IKEA, they have a lot of display toilets and if you they, they sticky tape the, the, lid the lids down. Closed. Yep. The lid's closed. Or sometimes if the lid's open, there's like a perspex thing, so you'll feel it. It's like, do not, this is not a real toilet or something like that. <laughs> yep. Uh, the other thing I'd encourage when you're photographing places is quality over the quantity. So stick your hand up if you've been to a place on maps and you've seen 500 images that are almost the same from the one person. I think pretty much all of us have seen those. Uh, interestingly, uh, if you're in Android or iPhone, you can now report that profile if you find someone doing that. You can report their entire profile. You don't need to report the images one at a time anymore. So please feel free to do that. You're doing everyone a favor by cleaning up maps. The other thing I'd strongly encourage is only recent photos. So if you've been to the place within the last couple of months, that's probably fine. But earlier than that, I probably wouldn't do it because the, the idea of maps is the representation of what the place is like now, not what it used to be like. And try and show off the place, not you or your friends. Now, the only exception to that is if you need to show the, the vibe of the place in a way that's suitable for groups and you've got a group there, that would be okay to have a group photo, but I wouldn't go putting a lot of them in there. I can't say don't do it because I've done it. You know, I would say like one one sort of exception to that is if like like for especially for restaurants, if you're you know take a photo of the entrance, then a photo of the food, and then photo of your party with food sitting at the table, I feel like that's that's acceptable. Yeah, that kind of thing's okay. Um, the other yeah. place that might be good is at a, a bar, showing how exciting the place is, or possibly a dance venue. Then it's okay to have people in them. I think. Yeah, but one thing I I like I, I see one guy who takes like a selfie of himself in front of a cafe or like in front of a pharmacy. Like that's that's like, nah, nah. Yep, yep. Maps is about the place, not about the person who's visiting it. And well, look, there was one of so one one guy went to a bank, and it was just a picture of him standing outside the bank. Like and it, he it, like it, it wasn't relevant. Like it wasn't he wasn't even using the ATM. But he was just standing out front of a bank. Did he have boring. a screen mask on? <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was um, holding a note you know but i feel like some of those ones might be from like people who take the photo and then like you know they go to google maps and it's like they ask him oh do you want to add this photo to the map and they just go yes i feel, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm that, sure that might, does happen yeah i don't feel i feel like they weren't deliberately added i feel like they were just like recommended into being added hey who's noticed in the app that it um doesn't ask you to add the photos more than once now. So if the photo is already on maps, it doesn't suggest it. I've, I've seen that. Yeah, that's good. That's a new feature. It doesn't seem to be out for everybody. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, remember your photo rules or suggestions and try and make sure the shots are cool and good. Now, I do encourage people to be careful because contributing to maps is not really about points. I know you get them and I know they're fun. We all want them. I'm at a level 10, I want points, but um, it's not about all those points. Now, product wise, it's good to highlight what a business sells or the features of a place and try and make the stuff look interesting. Max has found something else to show us. And for products, think the same way you do with food. So you, you make food look attractive. You make food look like something that people want to eat. Do the same things when you're in a store with their products. What do you want to show us, Max? I just quick, quick counterpoint. You were saying it's not all about the points. A quick counterpoint. It is all about the points. <laughs> all I do is I want to get them sweet, sweet points. A million points. I just want all the points. Weirdly enough, um, once you actually get to level 10 where points don't matter anymore, I've actually discovered that I accumulate points faster than I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those weird things. So 
what I'm going to do now. But my yeah. favorite one is one day, I wonder they added a whole bunch of extra point reasons, like for longer reviews or for um, a different, sometimes or like they just add different points. Sometimes they give you extra points for when they change those rules. So that's always great when you get extra points for that reason. Yeah. Now, I just have to stop the presentation for while I'm doing what I'm doing next, because I'm actually going to take you out into maps. And hopefully awesome. this will work. So <laughs> at a small place, and I'm suggesting like a, a food shop or a railway station, um, I like to add a photo of the entrance if Street View is out of date. If Street View is current, I don't usually bother. Um, one inside photo showing the vibe and feeling of the place and a photo of each food item you order. You can tell they started this as a burger shop because it says one burger photo. Well done. <laughs> one burger photo. <laughs> so hopefully it'll let me go to the Sorry. link. Now, is showing, can you guys see maps now? Yes, we can. Yay, it works. It took me ages to figure out how to link to a particular place. And you can link to one of your own reviews, but you can't link to your own timeline, which is a bit weird. So this is a, a small... It's very hard. It's very hard. Yeah. This is a small place. Um, you'll notice I didn't get my first image particularly straight. I'm a bit sad about that. The first one I'm going to show you, it's not straight. You know Google Photos, you can, it does that, has that auto-rotate feature? It doesn't work after you've put it on that, so you've got to do it before. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Um, I did put up an image of the outside of this place because Street View didn't have one at all. And it, 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 I have to say it's not a very inviting looking cafe. It really looks industrial. It, I presume it's in an industrial park. Yeah, it is. But inside it, it's quite nice. And they have really nice bun meal, or pork rolls. And for those that... Um, don't go in for pork. They also have chicken and lamb and a bunch so of I, So things. you've noticed, I just want you to put, you can see actually the amount of times the photo has been viewed on your review. Yep, you certainly can just up here. Um, and one thing I've always wanted, I would love to be able to, for not just me, but for other people to be able to see the amount of times it's been viewed. That would be like a much a feature that I would really like. Um, I think you actually used to be able to do that, but they took it away. I'm, I'm not that surprised because it, it causes um, competition amongst people for something that they can't actually control. Uh, yeah, but I just, it just makes me, it just makes it like, it's kind of like Instagram likes or like Facebook likes. It just make it shows how, I just want, well, I guess for me, because I'm trying to sell, people, get shopping centers or other retailers to, to, you know, use my services. It just it, 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 it's not uh, for me to have to give a screenshot of every every image. It's just like a lot of work. But if they can see it already, it's just it makes it a lot easier for me. Yeah, I think GMB has been talking about doing some increased reporting for views for businesses. But, uh, I haven't seen anything materialize from that yet. So the next one is a medium sized place where I sort of suggest that you do again an entrance one or two inside photos that give you the vibe or the feeling of the place, and one or two showing products. More's okay if their range of products is diverse. So this place that I chose, oops, this one, it's called Pet Stock, and they have a lot of different kind of pet foods and different kinds of pet supplies. So I was comfortable putting seven photos up here. But it's interesting that the dog leashes have 4,700 views. That's just kind of weird, but that's okay. Um, 12,000 views on pet bowls. How does that happen? <laughs> yeah. I'm bowled away. Yep. And only 400 on pet toys. So people obviously care about pet bowls and don't care anything about pet toys. <laughs> but So these sorts of places, I look for vibrant, colourful things and try and show off what's there. If they've got a particular sale or something like that on, I might highlight those things so that people can see them. The only downside of that is they might see it there and go back go back there later. So you gotta be a little bit careful about that. But Maps is pretty good about not keeping old images in focus of people usually. So going onto a large place like a department or a hardware store, I'm sure we've all been to them. Again, the entrance, and the entrance of these places are often inside shopping centers. So they probably don't have street view at all. Inside shopping centers, if you love views, is an awesome way to get them because there is no street view photo. So if you go and put up a 360, or if you go and put up just an entrance photo, you'd be surprised what happens. And I tend to put up three to five inside photos. And if it's big enough, I'd sort of suggest up to 20 showing the product range. So I've 
naturally enough, I've prepared an example. These are places that I've just been to um, in the last couple of weeks. So this one's a Kmart. Interestingly, I haven't written, written a review for this one yet. Must do that. Uh, so I, I've just put up some of their wares. I've tried to keep in mind to keep the photos looking interesting. So finding interesting shapes, interesting colors, interesting pandas. <laughs> now, I'd have to say pandas aren't popular because, you know, only 45 views. Fry pans have got 1,400 views. I feel like it's not relevant. So, like people searching for a Kmart aren't searching for a, pa a panda pillow. I don't know. They're cute. <laughs> Various um, questions. There's a question in the have? chat. And there's a question in the chat that I'm just going to read out for you, which is, Thank at you. Paul, my question is when you post a photo on Maps Review, do you edit or do you just post as you as you go? Do edited photos give more views or not edited photos? I don't think it makes any difference. So I, I try and get the photo as, as right as I'm going to for a place when I take it. Uh, if you need to edit it to improve the light or improve the color a bit, something like that, or maybe fix the not straight one that I put up there before, that would probably be a good <laughs> thing for me to do. Uh, then yeah, you can certainly can edit them before you upload them. If you do I, edit it, one thing to be gonna, careful was, of though. I was gonna say is, I was gonna say, so I, I you know, because we don't we don't get paid to upload photos. We don't get paid for these photos. But you know, often I just go into Google Photos and I go to the auto setting, so it just automatically makes uses a recommendation to make it usually a bit more brighter and colourful. And then I just save that and then I upload that one. I just use auto edit. Yep. One thing I would be careful of the new feature that helps with uh, preventing you from uploading duplicates unintentionally will see the original photo and the edited photo as different photos and it might prompt you to upload both so just be careful of that and mm. Andy, you, you know where will be answer to that question yes i have <laughs> i'm pretty sure you were there ananda can you tell us that story you have to unmute ananda no i uh, can't remember the one with paul but uh um shopping melbourne mall central sorry melbourne central, <laughs> melbourne central. Oh, yeah. Yeah. some of the shops are very very um controlling on how their brand is represented and this was a a shop that was selling um towels and things like that and the the, the colors in their shelves and the way they had everything rolled and stacked just looked nice so i took a picture of it and they weren't very happy that i took a picture of it yeah but we get we get things like in the burbs we get things like uh knox city uh, which is is a very large uh, dispersed mall, and uh, the the security guards uh, get hassle people because their kids playing and stuff like that. Yeah. Well. Now, before you head in there, if you're going into a mall in particular, um, get online, go to their website, and check what their photography policy is, because I can just about guarantee you they've got one. So, if you know what their photography policy is before the security guard fronts up to you, and you can say. I'm sorry, mate, but this is allowed. Here, look on my phone. This is your website. It says I can do this. Then uh, you, you're fine. Now, some of them do actually say you can't take photos. And in those places, I do recommend as a local guide that you don't. But if you do want to do it, using your phone is a lot less conspicuous than using a, a normal camera. It will attract a lot Or a 360 camera. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, so what we, uh, Paul and I were on a photo walk and we went to a restaurant and they asked us not to take photos. And I was like, man, you're missing out. We're on a photo walk. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's worth trying to explain to them. But, you know, some places don't want to do it. And there's a, a place in Melbourne. It's a juice bar. Um, they absolutely hate it when you take their picture. So I sort of take that as a personal challenge. <laughs> but not at a local guide's capacity. <laughs> um, so public places, same deal, entrance. Now parking can be good for a public place if it's a, a thing like a park, because that can be important for people who have got young kids and they want to know, is there somewhere I can get out of my car safely? Are the spots big enough to get a pram out? Um, if, if the person needs has, has accessibility needs, they want to know if there's enough room to get their chair out or whatever other machines they need to use. In these places, I tend to suggest one photo for each major feature, and that might be a playground or some barbecues, tables, drinking fountains. Um, I particularly highlight a drinking fountain if it's got a way to fill up a water bottle, so filling up your bottle, or if it's got a way to fill up a dog bowl or it's got a built-in dog bowl, they're pretty handy. And one for each activity area in the place, so things like sports grounds. 
So this one is Mornington Park, which is relatively near to where I live. We, we've got some different things there, the entrance. We've got some picnic tables. There's quite a lot of them in this park. Layout of the park, that there's some barbecues and things like that. An adventure playground, which at the time was covered in safety tape because of COVID. It's open again now. The kids are allowed to play again. Boo, COVID, boo, city virus. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll all have it sooner or later and then it'll be fine. <laughs> and if it's an enormous place, now this is something like a, a national park, a theme park, a museum, then I think plenty of photos is okay for a place like this i think it's actually quite okay to go a bit crazy at a really big place because they have so many features to show off and at the bigger places like if you look at something like disneyland they're getting in the vicinity of ten thousand photos a day posted to google maps if you have a look at the counts if you want your photos to be seen you're gonna have to put up a lot <laughs> there's no way around that <laughs> so in in this sort of place and concentrate on important things like accessibility features in the place and, and entertainment. So on this one is the Royal Victorian, Gar Royal Victorian Botanic Gardens in Melbourne. We did our um, first post-COVID photo walk there just last week, which was kind of cool. And I've put up quite a few shots of the place showing the plants. I'm sorry I missed it. It looked like a lot of fun. It was so near your house too, Max. Yeah, next time. <laughs> So in, in these places, in normally I wouldn't suggest going in this close for stuff, but in the botanic gardens, it's okay because people are actually there to look at the plants. It's the only reason you go to the botanic gardens, apart from the fact it's just a nice place to have a picnic. So concentrating on plants and the ponds and things like that, perfectly okay in this sort of place because it really gives people the idea of what the vibe is like. Um, it also gives photographers an idea of what they can go there and look at and what they can see. which would be all kind of cool. So we're going to go on to the 360 blue lines now, and I just have to stop presenting again for a moment and change the way I'm presenting because I'm going to run a video for you guys. And I have to do that. Oh, with... no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I slightly oh, no. approach. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm just stalling for time. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's not that kind of video, Max. Not that kind of video. So the idea in the blue lines, I imagine you've all seen them on maps. Do you actually know that local guides can make these? Not many local guides know about it. You have to be level six or higher. If you're in the Street View Trusted program, um, you get some slightly different features, but you don't have to be in the program to do this. All you need is a camera that's capable of recording 360 video in the format that the Street View app wants it. So. The feed of V is one I've of those. I've done it, but it's so hard to do. Even for me, I find it really challenging. Yeah. With the feed of V, it actually is a little bit difficult, I have to admit. But the there are some other 360 cameras which make it a little bit easier. They've got a lot more memory than the feed of V. Uh, there's one that can do 200 minutes of video, which will cover just about anything. You can also use a new method, which I'm not going to show you today, but it's a because I don't think it's completely available to everybody yet, but there's a new method that lets you use your phone to capture one side of a street as you drive along, and then you can drive back the other way and capture the other side, and it somehow blends them together. So the idea is that Street View helps you find the way, and we're going to have a look, quick look at Pegman in a moment. I shouldn't have stopped presenting yet. Who's actually seen Street View? You're all familiar with it? You know how it works? Yeah, there's a few people that aren't nodding, so I, I will actually show you, and I'll just have to present a different tab, and I'll just go to one that's nowhere near where I live. Because while I don't mind you guys knowing where I live, I don't really want that on YouTube for some funny reason. So I'm just presenting a maps tab you now. don't want to show where you live on When that turns up. YouTube. Pegman lives down in the bottom right-hand corner. It's a little bit different if you're using your phone. Um, on the phone, the peg man is done via a layer. He is actually finally back. Yay! He's gone for a year. But if you drag peg man onto the map, you can see all these blue lines. 
And the other things you can see is a little circle. So those little circles are individual 360 photographs that people have taken. So not having reviewed this, let's just quickly look at one of them. So this oh, is- Oh, snap, that's good. Yeah, so th this is one that someone's done for a 360 tool for this place, most likely. But that's a pretty cool one. So you scroll down the bottom, scroll down the bottom and see if, if they've taken rid of the bottom, then yeah, then that's probably, that's a pro. Yeah, because the tripod's gone. Yep, definitely. Yeah. And it's a tour as well, if you notice, you can move. I reckon, yeah, I reckon if the tripod's gone, it's a pro. If there's a tripod there, then it's an amateur. Yep. So you can see lots of stuff from the Street View app. I won't. Won't stay in anybody's place too long. Uh, look, they, check it now. Go back. Go, go back for a sec. Oh, you can, if you scroll uh, down, you, you can you can see the the um you can see the shadow of the Street View camera. Yeah, that's the Google <laughs> car. Yeah. So you can always see who put the photo up there, whether it's Google or someone else. And you can see there, there's someone hard at work mowing the lawn. Look at that nice free ad for them in the video. Free ad for them. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. There's two of them. Look at that. So Google catches the most interesting things happening. Yeah, if you Google it, um, you can see all sorts of people doing pranks on Google. Like what, there was one guy pretending to to um, to murder another person, one person pretending to hide a body, and there's all sorts of <laughs> funny things people try and trick, uh, try and trying to capture when the Google car comes around. It's like a very very interesting. My favourite one is about fifty people dressed up as horses running after the car. The other one, I've, <laughs> the other one I've seen. That have to be organised. Yeah, the other one I've seen that was really cool is um, a whole bunch of stormtroopers jogging along beside the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So when I go into the next slide, it's going to play a video. So I will be quiet for the next eight minutes or so, except that it's still me. It's just me from the past. So I'm a time traveller. <laughs> just recording a bit of a tutorial for using the Rico Theta V. Can you turn the audio up a bit, please? Got this one at the Connect Live event. Is that better? So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the Wi-Fi is actually louder. connected to our camera. So we're just tapping the Wi-Fi. Start it up. I think and that might be as loud as it gets. It will connect. Hopefully. Cool, okay. Here we go. It does sometimes take a while with the theater. It's uh, interesting Wi-Fi connectivity. There we go. It's found it. Interesting. It's connected. Good. So the next thing is we'll start the Street View app itself because that's what we use to connect with the camera. So that's just opening up now. And it's told me that it has connected to the camera, which is good. So if I bring this up, there's a few that I've created earlier, but that's not what we're going to be doing this morning. This morning I've found a walking path not very far from where I live, which doesn't have street view because it used to be a street, but now it's not. So I'll end this tutorial here for the moment and we'll start again when I'm ready to record the street view path. Okay, so we're out in the wilds at the start of this path now. So I'm just going to start up the Street View app and it has connected to the camera. That blue bar would be orange if it hadn't. So go the little blue button, tell it we're going to do a video because we're going to record 4K video and then create the Street View path from there. So I'll not talk for a while because I'll just record this while we go. So starting video up now. You heard the little bleep from the camera and I'll put this in the pocket for safety. So I've got the phone out again, I'm almost at the end of the path now, so I'll tell it to stop recording in a moment. It's a bit uphill, that's why I'm puffed. I'm also puffed because I'm old and fat. So I'm just at the end of the path, so I'm going to stop it recording now. And you can hear the camera bleep. And I'll tell it to download this stuff now. I'll start the video again when I'm ready to upload over Wi-Fi.
So we've now reached the other point that needs street view for the local area. This is a thing called the Grey Gum Walking Trail. This also used to be a street here, but after these first couple of driveways, it no longer is. So I'm going to start the street view video and I'll head down. I'll keep it on live this time because it's only a short one and we'll see you again at the bottom. I probably won't keep talking because I look like a dickhead. Okay, the video started. Now we just start walking. And you can see it's making the path as we go down. You can also see there's no street here on the map. So once this goes in, one of the side effects will be that this path will actually appear on the map, which will be kind of cool. We're at the end of the driveway bit, coming down onto the walking path. It's only a couple of years ago that this actually was a street through here. It's not a bad sort of spot. Sorry about that, I accidentally stopped the video when I moved the phone around then. Because as soon as the phone goes to sleep, the video stops. Oh, beautiful birds there. Yeah, I think I scared them. Or maybe they saw my beard and thought it was a good place to have a nest. Amazing how people try to occupy what is a public walking trail, according to our local council. You wouldn't think so based on all the stuff people dump on it. So, almost down at the bottom of the path now. So, about to join back up with the street view in the other road. So I'll just stop the recording here and let it start to download. I found it's always better to download now rather than later because it's a complete pain in the ass if you do it later. So I'm not going to bore you through talking through all of the downloading process, I'll just let that happen. And I will start this again when it's time to upload on Wi-Fi. So, hope you're enjoying this so far. It's kind of exciting. Okay, back again. So, arrived back home. I can see in my Brobit profile that there were two new Street View videos to publish. So. I'm just going to make sure that I am actually back on my Wi-Fi at home. Looks like I am. Because I don't want to publish them over 4G because it will cost. So, what you've got to do is just hit publish on them. You can see it's started. Well, kind of. 1%. So, I'll just send the other one as well. And they'll go one after the other. So that'll be a while while they go up, and I will show you what they look like when they're done. Okay, we're back again, so we're just going to have a quick look at my profile, because they've both uploaded now. So if I just lift this up a little, what you see there is the two video parts that I put in, generic background, and still processing. Um, in my experience, it takes about 8 to 13 hours or so before they become processed and turn into an actual street view path. Google say it's 24 to 48 hours, but they're probably just being a little bit cautious in their timings there, I think. So I'll come back and have a look at these tonight or tomorrow and show you, hopefully, the completed paths because that would be the whole point of doing this. All right. See ya. Well, welcome back. I just wanted to show you this because um, I've never seen it do it before. So you can see that the paths themselves have actually been processed and they've made all of the individual images. It was actually really quick. It was less than half an hour. Um, it hasn't made the blue lines yet. So I've not seen that particular thing happen, but it's still doing all the images. It's still making images, interestingly enough. 
So maybe they've changed it so you can see a bit of it happening at a time. But anyway, I thought I'd, you'd be interested in uh, seeing this set of images. So we can go and click on one of these and it takes us straight to it. We can open it up and we can have a look around. So there's the, the path. You can sort of see that it's wide enough to have once been a street. Certainly not anymore. Of course the hat. And heading off down into the bit that looks a little bit more like a path. So it's kind of cool. And anyway, so I'd show you this development because I've not seen the app actually do it ever. So it's quite interesting. I'll come back when it finishes the paths. Bye. Okay, welcome back again. I've cranked this up again because one of them is now fully processed, except what they both are now. And we now have a path. It's that nice blue line across the middle there. Um, I also had a look on desktop and it's already populated there. So if we go to any of those spots in Explore, we will actually discover that there's now Street View for these two areas that didn't have it before. So that's basically the end of this tutorial. And as you can see, it's really, really simple, although it does take quite a while to get your images from the Theta V in form of video processed into stills and then onto the map, which is pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will probably do some more for other topics at some point in time. See ya! Funnily enough, doing more tutorials now, yay! Oh well, we're going to come to our special guest now, who's probably just spat coffee all over her monitor from the photo I chose. <laughs> <'Cause> I... <laughs> you suck, Paul. Get that on YouTube. <laughs> oh, it's going to be there. So this is our warrior princess, Justine, who's going to talk to us about accessibility. So I'll stop repeating so you can take over. Uh, Welcome, Justine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really bad photo that you chose, Paul. Very, um, yeah, anyway. It's an awesome you photo. You've all seen it now, so anyway. Um, can you see my screen? So my question is, um, I only have 10 photos on Street View, so it wouldn't be too hard to do the math. Um, but the total view count seems to be way more than the individual counts on each of my photos. View counts with Street View are weird. That's about all I can say about that. <laughs> right, okay. I, I, sometimes when I try and review my street, my view count on Street View, like whenever I view my own photos and I go back of it, it adds like mm -hmm. one or two to each photo. And I was like, well, that's not accurate because I'm viewing my own photo and it makes it hard to calculate. So yeah, but I'm, I'm talking like I'm talking like a crazy amount more max. Like yeah, like I've got the same number of view counts on ten Street View photos that I do on three thousand photos on Maps. Strange. Yeah, it's really bizarre. But anyway. Yeah. Did you I say, are you, are, you, are you looking at the numbers in the Street View app? Um, yeah, so you know how it gives you a total view count, but then you can actually go into your stats and you can actually have a look at the individual view counts on each of the photos. The street In the Street View app, it'll only give you the data on your 360 photos and that will yeah, yeah. be less than your general app in the My Photos app, which is showing all your photo counts. Yeah, no, no, no. So the, I'm the, the, the full view count actually is both, I think. Right. Okay. So in Street, what? So in Street View, it's showing you all your photos on Google Maps and Street View. Is that right? Well, in in the full count, yeah, I think it does. Right. That makes more sense. Okay. Thank you. You can hopefully people can see your presentation now. So if you just want to say next, oh, we can you see want it. We can we can, can see the presentation. Can I go ding like that? Sure. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, so um, today or this evening, I'm going to be talking to you or sharing with you about using photos to map function and accessibility. Um, I want to start by saying I'm certainly no expert. Um, I'm just learning um, on a learning journey. So um, hopefully I can share some of my learnings with you and you can share some with me. Ding! So, um, this evening, I'm going to be talking to you or asking you why do people use Google Maps 
And then uh, having a think about um, using photos to make Google, Google Maps more functional and also using photos to increase accessibility. Next slide, Paul. So why do people use Google Maps? You can uh, turn on your microphone to tell me or you can type it into the chat window. I'm interested in um, knowing why do you use Google Maps? Why do you think people use Google Maps? Hello, Justin, can I come in? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, probably personally, I'm a, I'm a traveler. Most of the times I'm on the road and I, I don't like the idea of asking directions from people. So most yeah. of the times I get my direction on Google Maps and it, it gives me the directions without any difficulties. So probably I use Google Maps to see places in advance and to get directions. Fantastic, yeah, me too. I'm very directionally challenged, so... <laughs> That's why I use Google Maps. Yep, to search about a place and see what it looks like and what all is there. Um, the reviews of a place, um, to look for places to eat mostly. That's Jessie. Um, for navigation and which places to visit. Great. Next I, I slide. Use it to see, I use it to see where accessible bathrooms are. <laughs> Do you really, Max? Well, if I have a friend who is has low mobility, uh, yeah. that really helps them. Yeah, fantastic. So it's helping you to plan, isn't it? To plan ahead. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you. Next slide, Paul. Okay, so it's to do all those things and it's also to find the places worth visiting and the things worth doing. Next slide, Paul. Can I just interrupt there for a moment? Sure. Did you know that this is actually the Google Maps and Local Guides mission statement? Yes, I do. Have you ever seen it published anywhere? apart no. from when they showed us on one slide at Connect. No. <laughs> yeah, good luck finding it. I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> but that's the whole point. It's like, um, it's like uh, what is it, Starbucks, right? Like they never pa uh, publish their mission statement, but um, people know it. Yep, it's the impossible mission. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so aesthetically, which do you think is the better photo? So the one on the left or the one on the right? You can either say it or um, put it in the chat window. Uh, the left one? You think the left one, okay. I just think the aesthetic, it looks, shows the aesthetic of the whole store better. Yep. Right, I left, right. I like yep. the right one better aesthetically. Yep. Okay, right. great. So right seems which... fairly popular, but there's a few going for the left. Okay. Paul, can you go to the next slide, please? Sure. Which one helps you to know that you're in the right place? The left one. Left one. Yeah. So thinking about the functionality of maps and the reason that um, a lot of people actually use maps is to find where they're going. So putting that frontage photo in there, um, especially if there isn't, like Paul said, um, a 360 Street View app, can actually be really helpful for people um, because if they've got their map out and they're wondering, you know, where they're going and they're looking at it and they're thinking, gee, have I reached the right place? They can actually have a little bit of a look and say, yep, that's the place that I'm going. Um, just as a little side note, I actually didn't know that you're not allowed to take photos in some shopping malls, but no one's ever said anything to me, interestingly, enough when I've had my camera out um, and I've taken photos in lots of shopping malls um, because I find that um, a lot of them don't actually have photos of the front of their shop um, and I think that's pretty helpful um, and useful for people so I actually take a lot of those and when I was in Melbourne um, particularly at Fountain Gate which is a massive shopping centre where thousands of people go um, there were lots of stores that didn't have any photo of their shop front which I thought was really interesting because then it just has like that blue picture on Google Maps and doesn't look very nice. So, yeah. Next slide, Paul. Well, your face looks nice and sweet and innocent. You don't look like a creepy old man, which is probably why you get away with it. Correct. And I'm sure. And I just smile. <laughs> just as a side note, everybody should Google, not now, but do it later, Google Kath and Kim Fountain Lakes and you'll understand <laughs> that suburb perfectly. <laughs> So um, I guess what I'm saying is it's not about um, putting one or the other on, as Paul was saying before. It's just an opportunity that if you're not currently, if you're only taking photos when you're inside 
somewhere, like a restaurant taking a photo of food, um, it might be interesting to think about also taking a photo of the outside. It might not look as nice to you or, or as interesting, but it might be um, helpful to people. Okay, next slide, Paul. So frontage photos help people find the right place. They assist businesses and they can also increase your contribution to maps. And most of you probably know, but I didn't for a long time, that you can actually load a photo without doing a review. Um, so that can be really helpful too. Um, this is actually my second most viewed photo on maps and it's just um, the front of Rebel Sport. Yep. Although maps will probably bug you to do a review because it thinks you've been there. <laughs> yeah, it does, but I don't do reviews of places that I haven't been, so. Yep. None of us should. The, <laughs> Next uh, one. The other cool thing about these entrance yeah. photos is from an accessibility perspective is they show you whether you can get into the shop or not. Yeah. And inside a modern shopping mall, it's pretty unlikely that you can't because particularly in Australia and in the US and in most of Europe, they actually have laws about whether you can get into a shop or not. And they all have to. They don't have a choice anymore. They actually have to. But there's a lot of older places there where you still can't and they get away with it for, I think, the next couple of years. So looking through the lens, lens of function also helps us to consider accessibility. And there are certainly, um, that little picture there, there are some incredible local guides that do amazing work in terms of um, accessibility. And those are just some of the people um, in that Whoa. photo. Jessie, your photo's there. Is that, is that Penny? Yeah. Is that, is that Penny? <laughs> yep, that's yep. Penny. So I just want to explain the language I'm going to use. I'm going to use the word differently abled versus disabled. And the reason that I'm going to use the language differently abled is because there's a focus on strengths and abilities. So when I talk about differently abled people, um, you'll understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. Next slide. Okay, so one of the great things that you can do with photos is actually use them to um, help people uh, find out about accessibility features. So for example, um, this was a photo I took of a beach. Um, this is actually Four Mile Beach. No, I won't say where it is. This is just a beach somewhere. <laughs> and you can see that there's actually a ramp leading down to the beach. So I also used captions um, down the bottom just to highlight the fact that this was the ramp leading all the way down to the beach. So that's something that um, you might consider doing as well if there's something in particular that you wanted people to know about. Do you know did, you use the hashtag, did, you, did you use the hashtag one accessibility or just the hashtag one? Um, I used one accessibility, but I think they're getting rid of hashtags now. Um, Paul would be able to, to tell that. Yeah, hashtags used to be used to set the features of the place, but now what they're asking people to do is actually open the place and to choose the features that are relevant for that place. So there might be accessibility features or there might be food features or whether it's open or not, whether it's uh, currently accepting in-store shopping, whether they accept credit cards, whether they have um, contactless payment and things. Well, there's lots of new questions that are relevant to our current situation. So the, they are definitely getting rid of hashtags. Uh, do you know the new thing about captions? No. It's only just happened quite recently. But the, the newest thing about captions is if you're doing it on a PC now, um, you need to set the caption before you upload the photo into the photo metadata itself using whatever you're using to manage your photos. Oh, wow. Because Maps actually takes it from there. So in that example I had at the Botanic Gardens, I've got 80 something photos up there that all say Olympus Digital Camera because I didn't know about that feature before I uploaded them. Now I do. <laughs> and you can't change them once they're up there, sadly. Next slide. There you go. Yes, please. Uh, Je Jessica was saying something about hashtags. Do you want to? Jessica says, yup, hashtags don't work anymore. Um, so this is just um, a photo of a menu at McDonald's. But what I noticed was that there were some accessibility options down the bottom that I had never noticed before. So I've used, um, I've got a Google Pixel 3 XL. Um, so I've just used some of the editing software on my phone to put in that little circle graphic highlighting it um, and just putting the words accessibility options. Obviously, you don't want to do um, too much because you don't want it to obstruct the photo, um, but it can be helpful if you just want to point out that there's a certain feature. So that might be something that you, you might want to consider doing. 
Yep. One thing to be careful of if you're watermarking images like this is you're not allowed to do it on more than 10% of the image. It must be on an edge. So lucky you, Justine. And it's not allowed to be distracting. Mm. Well, that makes sense, right? Yep. Okay, next slide. So um, you can see that I've got a couple of photos here. The one on the left is actually another beach, but there was a beach wheelchair that you could hire here. So um, you can often capture these sorts of photos. You don't have to take a photo of this specifically, but it might be um, a broader photo, but you might um, frame it in such a way that you do actually get this information um, in there. Um, looking back on this photo, it also would have been really helpful to put the opening times. So if someone did want to hire a beach wheelchair, they would know when they could actually go to do that if they were planning to visit the beach. Um, and the other one is things, of course, like parking spots, but also with the um, differently abled parking spots, um, access to, for instance, things like being able to access the footpath. So is there a ramp close by? Um, is the ramp on an incline? Is there a heavy door at the top of that ramp? Um, is someone who's differently abled going to be able to open that when they do get to the top of the ramp? So thinking about the next step, not just the differently abled parking or toilets. And I've got on there, um, so you could um, make notes of things like equipment available for hire, special features. Um, so like in a cinema, they will often have certain screenings, have low noise, low lighting or closed captions. Um, all the usual stuff, parking spots, toilets, ramps, lifts, rails, the layout inside as well as outside, um, and also the accessibility of the entire venue. So are there heavy doors? Are there steep inclines or declines? Or is there um, un uneven ground that someone might have difficulty um, traversing? Next slide, Paul. And I think it's really cool that that particular place is really thinking of everyone because that path is for wheelchairs, irukandji jellyfish, crocodiles and sharks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not yes. dogs. <laughs> yeah, beaches are very friendly in Australia. So um, I just had my top three fun um, top three tips on function and accessibility. So like Paul was say saying, take a range of quality photos, including the frontage if there's not a 360 photo. Imagine accessing a place as a differently abled person. Um, being an able-bodied person, we have certain privileges that we probably aren't even aware of. The fact that we can see signs, the fact that we can hear noises, the fact that we can walk, for instance, up and down stairs. So sometimes I find for me, if I imagine what it might be like accessing that place as a differently abled person, then I, I can often think about, okay, what might be helpful to map? What could I take a photo of that might help someone if they were planning, for example, to visit this place with someone in a wheelchair or with someone with mobility issues or with someone with a child on the autism spectrum um, who doesn't like loud noise? for example. So think about the inside as well as the outside. And the third tip? It's certainly a different world before you move on to the third one. So um, last year I went to visit Penny in Sydney and we, we did a meet up naturally enough and I had damaged my knee and was actually in a wheelchair for that trip, which oh, wow. um, things through the airport was relatively smooth, but outside the airport was problematic. It was quite quite actually difficult to move around. The attitude of people towards you is quite interesting. And being able to find your way around and find places that you can get to was actually quite, it wasn't impossible, but it was hard. And the third tip is consider how captions, and as Paul was saying, and I didn't know and now I do, they have to be on your photo before you upload it. Um, and editing software can be used to add helpful details. But do remember, less is more. So remember those rules that Paul said. Yep. So on PC, captions need to be on the photo before you upload. On phone, both Android and Apple, you can still set them after you've uploaded. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Good <laughs> And the last thing that I wanted to end with was a call to action. So my call to action is, will you help every person on this planet not only find but also access the places worth visiting and the things worth doing? Because, <laughs> yeah, big love heart. Because um, I think that, I mean, I'm like I said at the beginning, I'm certainly no expert, but I think just having an awareness and a willingness to want to do this is enough to start. Um, and once you start, then you do become more aware as you continue um, on this journey. So I'd encourage all of you, please don't feel like you have to be an expert. You don't, just make a start. Thanks, Paul. No worries. Thank you very much for 
coming along. And if you're doing things like that, let me just change presentations. Um, don't be afraid of upsetting anyone and don't be afraid of uh, offending someone because you're doing the right thing for the right reasons. You can't really go wrong. So thanks a lot for Justine. And I actually picked the Warrior Princess photo deliberately. So I did tell you I'd pick one from Instagram. <laughs> But I chose this I chose this one deliberately because I think it actually depicts you and your attitude to life and the attitude to local guides really well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that brings us to this week's task. So if you're locked up, I'm fine with you doing an old photo for this one. Um, we did put a link to the album in the chat ages ago, but let me just go and find it and copy it and paste it in again. Uh, it's up here somewhere. Actually, it'll be on the slide, on the next slide. But what I'd like you to do is share a place photo and share a product photo. Now, that could be food, fry pans, chairs, I don't care, whatever you want. And if you are interested in having a go with the, the 360 photo, we'd love to see some of those. Um, that one's a little more challenging because you need to go and do that on the Street View app. But if you want to go to that kind of effort, it would be cool. If you're going to do that, uh, do it somewhere useful where there, there isn't one now. There's, you can actually upload it on the app and make it useful for Google Maps, but also pop it into the thing. Now, I thought that I would actually have a link to the album in here, but I... Oh, I skipped it. There we go. There it is. My apologies. I completely skipped the slide somehow. So here's the link to this week's album. Scroll that back down. And here's a link to this week's... I hope that's this week's feedback. I think I might just pop into Drive and just share this week's feedback again because I just had a horrible thought that I might not have updated that link. And that would be a little bit sad, wouldn't it? And looking at the link, it's different to the one in the presentation. That's the right one. So now it's time to do the question time. So we can unmute. I'll actually stop presenting. So if anybody's got any questions today. Now, the other thing I'd like to know before we dive full on into questions, um, would people be interested in a discussion on the genres of photography? So there's lots and lots and lots of different kinds of photography. And what I was thinking of doing for that, if we go ahead and do it next week, is I'll probably invite several different people in to talk about the, the different genres in areas that they're interested in, rather than just me talking away for an hour, because it's uh, probably more interesting for you to have multiple people. Uh, Jessica got kicked off the call, so I'll just, when people come in again, they can't see the old thing, so that's the photos link, and I'll just post the feedback link again as well. Has anybody got any questions tonight? Silence going on. Max has already added a 360 photo. How about that? <laughs> that's the 360 photo from the actual, um, from that I did on the demonstration. Excellent. So has anybody got any questions tonight? Uh, I, uh, I, yeah, so I did have, I had a question, uh, I had a question earlier about, about the coronavirus and this is what I, this is what happened. This is what I turned into. <laughs> Come on guys. You, now. you can see me now. You can see that I was clearly quite affected by the coronavirus it's very 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 challenging yeah it's particularly um, weird as it looks kind of like some sort of alien pig <laughs> the other uh, the other coronavirus that i got i got this coronavirus which is uh more expressive because you can see my eyes <laughs> a bit more of a fun coronavirus yep you are a nut <laughs> okay i'm gonna put my mask on so um that'll that'll cure me okay guru you had a question 
<laughs> Stuart's just holding up a sign that says bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah, you, I've got a question. It's yeah, uh, yeah, street view for uh, street view video. Just as a general guide, one kilometer of footage, how many gigs would that be? About 2.5. 2.5 gig. Okay. Yeah. So you probably don't want to upload that over your phone unless you've got a particularly generous plan. No. What, okay. what's, what's weird is it's quicker to upload it over your phone than over your internet, even if your internet's faster. That might be unique to Australia, but it uh, certainly works that way. <laughs> I've noticed that as well. I, I only upload on mobile because it's just too hard on Wi-Fi. Yeah. I've managed to make it work on Wi-Fi, but uh, it does take a long time. Um, Guru, I think you had a question. I saw you unmute a couple of times. Yes. Yes. Yep. Oh, like, like, actually... Uh, when and uh, after this only I have to uh, try the 360 street view photography. Yep. Uh, because still now I have not done any anything. Might be uh, like uh, after uh, now I can't post anything in Google. So after this lockdown is over, then only I can go have a. Uh, I thought of taking uh, a palace or something. Uh, it's uh, nearby there to take it 360 degree. Okay, and uh, if I post that day, um, will that be okay, but, but not now, only after the lockdown? Um, uh, yeah, def definitely don't break your lockdown to go out inside and do a, a shot. Um, so it, I don't do a, a 360 one inside your house. It's probably not the, the best thing to do. I know Max did, but... Most people probably don't want to be able to peer around your house in the photo album because the album will go public. And if you want yeah, me to... If, I, I definitely it, it, wouldn't recommend up uploading a 360 of a house to Google Maps. I was just <laughs> using that as a demonstration of how to do a 360. Yeah. Do not do a 360 of your house on Google Maps. Very bad idea. Yes. And uh, one thing about Max, already in the uh, media, they are showing this corona only. They're scaring us like anything. And you are having the mask again, scaring us here also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we don't have um, so much of a lockdown anymore. We've probably I think we're down to what was called stage three, which is we can have visitors now. I actually had some friends over here for the the first time in a while today, which was good. Are there any other questions this evening? And if someone wouldn't mind grabbing a screenshot and putting it in the album, like whoever, I think it was Jess did it last week, because um, I still can't see everybody. I can only see nine people. It's pretty helpful, Google Meet. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Yeah, it would, be, it would be great if we could do one with everyone. Yeah, you guys can, but I can't. No, no, we, I, can only see, I can only see nine people as well. There, there's a, a plugin that lets you have access to everybody. And unfortunately, it, it doesn't work on G Suite anymore. I, I, it's weird that you actually need a plug-in to see everyone. Like the fact that you need a plug, like that's that's just weird. Like that is a normal functionality for a lot of video chat features. So, yep, I'd love to be able to see everybody all at once. That would be really handy. Or you can't even like swipe, go to the left and see the next nine people and the next nine people. That would be, you know, as a as a site, you know, you couldn't get that. Yep, that would be pretty handy. So I know there's 24 people here, but I can only see nine of you. Yeah, Jesse's doing our screenshot, which is really handy. Thank you. Any other questions today, or we might wrap it up if there aren't? Uh, I'd just like to say thank you, Justine, for your presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Max. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation too on Street View. That was really good. Lots of lots of um, useful information. I was about to comment that Anil's surely going to ask about Lego, but he's actually dropped out of the meetup. <laughs> and Shreya, is Shreya going to be presenting in the following weeks? Shreya. Uh, no, I don't think so. I have much knowledge about photography, not more than you, certainly. Uh, I just wanted to thank Paul that I joined in late, but uh, Rosie Mom told me that you liked my photo for the last year's 
last week's task so i wanted to say thank you and it was and actually it was a great achievement as i told you it was my first attempt from making a chocolate so and it was so good so i just <laughs> probably clicked it and it was so good that i just ate all of them and didn't click any of it then so <laughs> Uh, thank you and justin your uh, presentation was very good i actually learned new things i do click uh, photographs of roads and the holdings uh, outside the shop so that you get information more about the timings and the accessibility so that was a very good thing thank you thank you for yeah hey, you're welcome so we're trying to do something a, a little bit different this week cuz we've covered a lot of different things on photography and if i'm a bit hesitant here i'm just trying to go and find a link to the 10 10 workshops thing on connect because jessica has asked where the video goes up so the video goes up onto youtube but i will put in that's for the one i want um i put a link to the slide deck and to and max is turning into a chocolate bar i <laughs> i put the the links to the slide deck and the video and the recap and everything it goes on to that post for each of the meetups so if you if you want to look at any of the past videos if you didn't come to those meetups they're all there they're all up on youtube for people to watch um this particular week i i do have to be a little bit careful and edit out three or four frames because my address appeared really briefly in the video <laughs> when i moved my mouse so i'll have to remember to get rid of those Um, and also, if anyone wants to do lots of fun camera effects like I do, then I will put a link in the chat it, uh, to download that software. It's a free software called Snap Snap Camera, and I reckon one week if we could get everyone doing some fun stuff, that could be a really fun thing. <laughs> Ania, will you do a Snap Camera with me? Yeah. <laughs> The only caution I'll, I'll I'll give with the Snap Camera app, I actually downloaded it and played with it, and I had a look at where it was sending traffic. All the time you're using it, it's actually sending Snap traffic to Snapchat. So who knows what they do with it? But it's sending your video stream there. I think it's funny because like all we ever do is send Google the da data to Google, but the app <laughs> Snap if it's Snapchat, oh no, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I understand the privacy policy of one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, Justine's up for it. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Who here would like to get Anya to uh, give us a presentation on street photography next week on street art? Ooh, ooh, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're getting lots of yeses there, Anya. <laughs> Thank <Hey>. you. <laughs> And you and I have done one meet up together about um, street art around the world, so I'm sure we can manage that. It's a particularly a vibrant thing to look at, and it happens everywhere in the world, and it's a, an interesting thing to see from the different examples. So that could be a genre of photography. So, any other questions tonight? Doesn't sound like it. Do you want me to pick on you, Jess? No. <laughs> They're right, I'll be nice. <laughs> so, on the count of 3, we'll do local guides again, like we do every week. 1. Are oh, you all need to unmute for this? Oh, wait a second. Let me let me get a good filter. Hello. Are we ready? Good. Yeah. Okay, let's 1 2 Three. Look. Local guides. Local guides. Local guides. We have local guides. 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 Local <laughs> local guides. Yes. Local guides. Local guides. Cool. We will have a special performance from Max uh, on a party day on fifth of July. <laughs> okay. Have a great night, everyone.
Yep. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, everyone. Have a good week. Bye. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye. All right. And Paul, this is the one I have done. Uh, I made everyone do this. Oh, it's awesome. It came out really nicely. Yeah. Like they had the, they done this sand and the star. It's and really cool. Adrian made it. two stars. Yeah. <laughs> and doesn't it look familiar? Yes. That's <laughs> even only, yeah. Uh, Cool. All right, everybody. We'll see you all next week. Thank you very much for coming along yeah. again. Thank and you. Bye. Thank you, Paul. Enjoy the rest. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Well, thank you, Paul. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.